on my way back from California, I ran into this rainstorm in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I think it fought, it was this way all the way back into Illinois. One of the worst rains I've driven in in a long time. Not one of my finer moments. So, uh, <laughs> it's been how my morning's been going. I woke up in Cuba, Missouri. I'm heading back to Indiana, pick up a fifth wheel going to Fresno, California. Got a full tank of fuel in my auxiliary tank, and I filled up in Oklahoma City in a pickup. Cruising along, everything going just great. Raining like crazy. I noticed I'm getting low on fuel, and I said, well, I'm not that far. It's, you know, the range on it is saying that, you know, you're so far from, I don't know, it's like 50 miles to empty, and I was 45 miles from the Petro in Effingham. So I get here, and I, right as I'm pulling in, I had a phone call. So I pulled into a reserve parking spot, just shot over right everybody way and got in a reserve spot. Thought, you know, I finished my phone call, I pull on over and get fuel. While I'm on the phone sitting here in the air conditioning, truck went dead, run out of fuel. Let me show you. I'm that far from the fuel pump. If I'd have went on and got fuel, I'd have been fine. Well, I got gassed up in Effingham. That was kind of embarrassing. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> had a full tank of fuel in my auxiliary tank. Turned it on, waited about 10 minutes. Hit the key, it fired right up. Went onto the pump, got completely topped off both tanks and came on to Elkhart. Got to Elkhart, went to the gym, and uh, stayed in there for quite a while and come out and crashed and got up this morning and uh, went and got my exhaust turned out. Then I went and dropped the truck off at Dan's and went back to the gym. It's getting to be about DOT physical time and I want to make sure my blood pressure and everything's right. I've been trying to eat better, hence the cooler, you know, and uh, seem to be working out pretty good right now. But I'm also waiting on a friend to get up here. He's about two hours away. I'm going to go, we're both hooking up in Hot Pigeon, Michigan and going to California. And uh, that's what we'll be doing over the 4th of July some stuff out of the back of the truck to put in the refrigerator. Stopped at Walmart yesterday, a couple of salads, some of this stuff. Some of this stuff. And drinks. And I figured out if I put my waters in first, or the cans in first, doesn't matter. I kind of stack them. You know, pull this one out, you got a uh, Pepsi on bottom, you pull the Pepsi out, got a water on bottom. There is on the tee kind of screws me up, but got some peppers, jalapeno peppers, can't leave home without them. And then some sandwich meat, some cheese, and some of them things. Some tortilla, like taco shells. I figure one of those, just roll it up into a wrap or whatever. And better, you know, it's less bread than a sandwich. So, cooler's working out great. This thing, I don't know if you can see that, but it's... I've had open because I've been stocking it. You can see the lights flashing, let me know the lid's open. It's still holding 37 degrees. The lid is still, maybe that's what it was. Maybe I had it sticking up a little far. If, if you push right here, it's either hit it right about here or push on it right in the front. And it closes a whole lot easier, just figuring it out, I guess. But it did wind up in the front seat. I'm still not a fan of that, but got tired of moving it from the back seat to the front seat. Still really wished it was back there in the bed of the truck, but kind of is what it is. But it's working out great. So most all your camper place you're going to lease into up here, they're going to want you to have a full mud flap on the back of the truck. If you got a Duramax, they're going to have to build a bracket around that exhaust, and I just don't like the way it looks, and it sits too low to the ground. So today... I found a place that would cut that pipe off. They had a four inch piece of four inch uh, pipe that was already pre-bent. Had them put that on. And now I can go get my full mud flap. Now this place is Etlinger's Automotive and they seem to do pretty good work. It's my first time in there. I just <clears throat> found them in passing. I wasn't referred and he said if you had anything like that you need to have done, give them a call. Okay, so here's the finished product. Um, Here's the exhaust being turned out. I love it. I never liked the way the Duramax, the exhaust exited out on the Duramax on the back, kind of at that funky angle with the, you know, I, I just haven't cared for it. 
So at the shop that I took it to, they were really good folks. They got me right in. He just happened to have one of these elbows laying around and he said if anyone else had a Duramax that wanted to do this, he could order it. And uh, he said the parts, well the parts and everything I think was about $150. Uh, they did rotate my tires and stuff so I didn't get a good breakdown on it. But I'll leave a, I'll try to put a picture of the business card in right through here somewhere. And uh, that way you can call, tell them what you got, see if they can help you out. But I really like the guy's weld job. I, th I thought he did a pretty good job. And that little piece hanging down is just part of a sticker that was on the coupler. And um, yeah, I thought it was turned out pretty good. It definitely got me in better shape to get my mud flap fixed. It's been hanging on, just barely hanging on for a long time now. Um, what I'm thinking about trying to do is get some black paint and on the Ultra Guard mud flaps. I don't like this being turned out. I think it looks a lot better, you know, just flat black all the way across without the writing on it. I'm not a fan of the writing. So I'm gonna get some high temperature exhaust paint and I'm gonna paint this. I don't know how it'll turn out, but, and it may just burn right off, but we're gonna try it anyway. And then I'll paint this, you know, to kind of get rid of that too while I'm in there. And I thought the mud flap turned out really good. They did it different than how they did it before. And for the most part, I like it. It looks good. We were talking about it and he was explaining to me how he was gonna do it, but, and I told him I thought that would work. You know, it sounds good. And um, I'll show you the, the pros about it the biggest pro about it is the other one the way that it kept ripping was the mud flap when I would drag it it would come up and this hitch would set down on it and rip it I like my hitch not get, it's not going anywhere but that fixed that problem now let me get back on the ground <coughs> now the next thing that I do like is like my air connection right here it's protected somewhat to keep road salt and grime and stuff from getting on my my air chuck because i have to change those things out pretty frequently because if i slide one of the little silicone boots up over it the water and stuff connect uh collects in the top i really should just bring it down and turn it out right now you know seeing how i've had this done but anyway that's a pro and then it protect, also protects my lights back here on the back. That's another pro. I need to kind of do something about the wiring now because used to you couldn't see it and now you kind of can. But the biggest con, the thing that will probably cause this mud flap to wind up laying in a ditch or a dumpster somewhere is the first time I have to change a tire. If you guys watched my videos and you saw where my buddy had the flat and we had to get his tire out from under his Dodge, he had the same style mud flap. Now his would move. You could swing it. This one doesn't move. I didn't think anything about that until after I was gone. I didn't think anything about that until after I got here. So when I start letting it down, on the other side it has a heat shield up in there just like his did on the Dodge. And that's a lot of tire to have to come out and clear that mud flap. I don't even know if there's enough room for it to clear the differential. It will be really tight and it's really hard to guide when one person's got to be outside cranking and the other person's got to be under the truck guiding and that may not work. If it gives any trouble at all, it will come off. But I guess when I get home, I need to try to take it off and see how big of a pain in the butt it is. And I do have other tires like this, take off tires and I'm trying to find a wheel like this. And I found one, I just haven't bought it. Um, and when I do that, I'm gonna put it up under here. So if I do have a blowout or run over something or have a flat, I can just yank that tire off, put the spare on and just keep on going about my business with a matching set of wheels and tires. Um, that would be, I'm really, I'm really hoping to get that done quick. But if this tire is wider than that one, 
then I'm gonna be in a mess because I have no clearance. So yeah, if you're getting if you're thinking about getting a mud flat put on, I think these are all things to think about. And that's why I'm showing showing this. Just like I say it I like it. I really like it except for the spare tire issue. And I don't know if it's gonna be an issue yet, but that's that's my main concern is the spare tire. If it drops right out and I can put it right back in by myself, I'll love it. If it gives issues and it takes two people to put it back under the truck. Because if you're pulling the fifth wheel and Lord hope you don't have a blowout going down the road and pulling a fifth wheel, but if you do, there's nowhere in the bed of the truck to put a tire. It has to go back up underneath the truck. And if it's in the middle of the night and you're on the side of the road, that can be dangerous and that can be just just a nuisance, you know, if it's if you're having to fight it to get it back in place. So you know, back there looking at the mud flap, I don't know there's gonna be an issue. I mean it could work great with it with a spare tire and I could my other tire may go right in just like I want to and all that. But you gotta think about something. When you go to a place like Dan's and you tell them that, you know, this is what I want. Well, if you don't tell them that you're thinking about putting a wider spare tire under the truck, they don't know. If you tell them that you've been dragging, they'll raise it up. You know, they, they try to build it to fit your needs. So I think they did an excellent job on it. And I'm sure that if they've heard people come back and say that they've had an issue getting a spare tire in and out, that they would have done something differently, you know. But uh, I'm going to try it out. Um, if you stick around and watch some more of my videos, you'll see, you know, if it comes out easy, you know, how, how all this is going to work out. And I'll let you know, but like as far as the functionality, if my spare tire ones it there, I love it. And I got over here and just now found my unit. I'm getting ready to back up, back up to it and look it over for damages. And the first thing I see, that's no good. So... I know I gotta call, make a phone call, and that, that sets my night off not so good. So I'll be here for a while. I'm gonna look it over and see if there is any more damages to tell them about, and I'll see what happens next. All right, so we got the lights put back in. Everything's, I plugged them into the bumper. Everything worked good after we got it put back in. And uh, we were given an okay to ship it. The scratches on it rubbed off. They weren't scratches. I thought they were scratched. They looked like scratches. But one thing I brought up in a previous video, um, they put you paperwork just wherever. I mean, you kind of got to dig for that. But most time it's in the door. But this time it was right here. In a previous video, I said something about the controllers. If I found controllers that were different, I was looking around for the control panel. And my buddy showed up. He helped me look for the control panel. And I opened this door right here. And he says, well... Is that not it right there? I said, yeah, that's it. But I've never seen it right here before. So we're going to figure out how to use it together. I'm going to turn the power on first. And see what happens here. Alright. Front. And then should, somewhere there should be a retract button on it. Oh, that is a tilt switch. So you push it this way and it goes down. You push it this way and it goes up. So it's a rocker switch on all these. So you, we only messing with the front. And I got my buddy up there guiding me up. All right, so that's got me right there. See, that's locked. Now we can finish hooking up.
Well, we got it all ready to go. This here, if you notice, my turn signal lights is flashing. And they do that now. I put in from, eight, I think it's a Boost Auto to convert it to where it flashes with your turn signals. I thought that was awesome. And these are the Morimoto 3.0 two-stroke headlights. And I've got mixed feelings about them right now. I haven't had them in long, but there'll be a review about those coming up too. I'm gonna walk around, check all my lights, make sure they're all working. Those are back in. They got them put in and uh, turn my headlight on. I just always like to walk around the unit one time after I get it pulled out. We're supposed to check them out before we hook to them. And I did and I found everything I, I could find. And now I'm just making a, another walk around just to make sure that there's not anything going on. And tighten the uh, lug nuts up, torque them down on this unit my trailer I wanted to put the tag right here but I'm not taking those nuts loose I'm just not going to do it I expect the regular bolts and I do like it's got the third brake light this thing lit up nice a high dollar wagon and then check the other side make sure it's still all lit up yeah I like how all the lights blink with the turn signals on this one that's nice i thought it would be lit up more on the side after seeing the way that the back and everything is lit up and, and here's this ride and he has a little baby sportsman going to uh where is he going he's going to banning if you're a truck driver and you've ever been out in California, the Banning Scales, he's going right there at Banning, California. And he walked around and looked mine over. I'm gonna walk around and look his over, make sure neither one of us missed anything, and then we'll be on our way. Yeah, he got a little unit. But that fifth wheel pulled better than this one. It'll weigh more, but it pulled better. Well, this right here is a prime example of why everybody needs a dash camera. When I was pulling out of the Flying J in Sarah, Oklahoma, as soon as I straighten up, you'll notice there's a little blue car about to make a turn in the left-hand lane. They're turning from the left lane, coming into oncoming traffic, onto the interstate. The reason I went in and pulled out in front of them, I was going to flash my lights and try to flag them down if they kept coming straight and let them know you're on the wrong side of the road. But, got to have it at dash camera. Always make sure you watch for stuff like that. Traffic going the wrong way on the highway. People, people, especially on a holiday weekend, they get out traveling and they don't, it's not that they're not paying attention so much as they just don't know, you know. But in the daylight, that's, I wouldn't have thought that uh, turned out the wrong way on a four lane highway, but at night, I see it happening a lot. I've passed dump trucks, I've passed big trucks, I've passed uh, all kind of vehicles coming at you on a four lane highway, even on the interstate, you know. But most of the time it's been at night. But uh, anyway, I've, like I say, I've, I've known people who have got hit head on because of stuff like that. I've never known anyone who was the actual person in the wrong lane, but I know people who were driving against traffic and it just being nighttime and the headlights, everything threw them off and they didn't realize it was someone coming at them on their side of the road. But anyway, so, as far as the damages on the trailer when I got there, you know, the two lights were hanging out and it looked like a big scratch right across to the lights. Um, I called dispatch and they told them and they said, no, that needs to go back to the manufacturer. I said, well, all right. He said, is there anything else on the board that you would like? And I said, no, really there's not. I mean, if I can't take this one, I'm gonna have to dead it on. You know, that's not what I want to do. He said, well, I don't know what else to tell you. I said, well, let me ask you this. Is it okay? Because I know I'm not supposed to touch the trailers. If I get up there, because it's on the top corner of that massive fifth wheel, you know, and uh, I said, if I can get up there safely and check the lights, if it's just the lights are just out, you know, I can pop them back in to where I can pop them back in, you know, would that be okay? And if you know, I'll look at that scratch and see what it looks like. He said, if you can get up there safely, you can try that. But you just remember, any driver, any damages can come back on you as driver damage. 
So if you get up there and look at it and it's got damages, you need to leave it. But now if it's just a lot popped out, you know, let me know. We'll go from there. So I got up there and it was. It was just rubber grommets that were out of the hole. So I took and pushed the rubber grommet back into the hole on both lights. You know, just fed the wire back in, pushed the lights back into the hole. They snapped right in. I have no idea why they were out. And then I got to looking at that big scratch beside of it because it looked like something that came right down the side and popped those lights out from the ground. But it was like silicone. It was like caulking. From the ground, the dusty dark. I mean, it really looked like a gouge. But when I got up there, I took and licked my finger and rubbed across it and it held it rubbed right off. What I could reach of it, you know, I didn't get it all off because once I saw it was coming off, I could tell it wasn't a scratch, you know, I was good with that. So I sent the guy pictures and asked him what he thought. He said, that's up to you. He said, because if you leave and it, it's damaged, it's going to come back on you as driver damage. But if you think it's good to go, take it. But if not, you need to leave it. So I looked it over. I had my buddy look it over, and we didn't really find anything else wrong with it. It was just those two lights and that what looked to be a scratch across the front, you know. So I went in and hooked, got it, texted him back. Said, "Well, I'm, I think it's good. I'm gonna take it. I ain't bother you at night." He said, "Well, that's, 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 I'd rather you do that than." Then take something you don't need to take but if from the pictures it looks good if you say it's good it's good go ahead and take it but just look it over you know i hope you looked it over really good i told him i did moving on so then we made it to effingham illinois and then uh crashed there got up yesterday morning and drove from effingham to stratford missouri got fuel and on to sarah oklahoma to fly and day and got there after driving a long drive like that it's hard to get myself motivated but I've started walking and I got out and walked a mile around the parking lot after we got there I'm trying to make sure I keep my blood pressure in check about six years ago it got out of whack and I got up nearly 300 pounds I weigh 230 now and uh, they put me on blood pressure medicine that didn't work and uh, I lost all that weight and my blood pressure went right back in check and it stayed there pretty much ever since it's got a little bit high a couple of times but for the most part it stays it stays under what the dot requires to keep your health up and that's all i'm worried about but i got to noticing i've been working so hard and it's been so far out of mind that you get in this habit of wake up check you know do your pre-trip check everything out and drive when you get the 30 minute break you either go in and get something to eat or you sit in the truck and or something you know you don't really get out and move and then you drive the rest of your day by the time you get there you're wiped out you might get out and walk in a store or something like that but not really exercise and then you get back in the truck and go you know or wherever you go hotel room whatever and go to sleep and you just don't get enough exercise doing this job and I know before it made a huge difference in the way I felt. It was very well worth it to take that. It takes me 22 minutes to walk a mile in boots. It's 20 minutes out of a 24-hour day. You know, and it, it's going to make that big of a difference. You know, it's worth it to me. So I did that last night. Day before, day before yesterday, I went to the gym while they were putting my mud flap on. I did. Two and a half miles on a treadmill and did some other stuff while I was at the gym at Planet Fitness because you what I'm gonna try to start doing is I'm not gonna take the camper off the route by no means, but on my way back I can stop at any Planet Fitness in the country for like $23 a month. And I'm gonna try to start hitting the gym pretty hard on my way back across. I mean it takes a little bit longer when I go to the gym and I stay in there a couple of hours, but I mean it's a couple of hours and I feel so much better when I come out. The first few times you feel like crap when you come out of the gym and after that it's like you just kind of start feeling better. So, um, yeah, don't let this, if, if you're doing this or if you're thinking about doing this, don't let this ruin your health. It can. You know, I sit here smoking cigarettes and all that stuff going down the road and the next thing you know, when I'm at home I smoke pack a day maybe a little better than a pack a day when I'm on the road I can very easily hit two and a half packs a day 
I try to be more mindful of that, of that and uh, trying to eat better and all that stuff. Like I say, if you let it this job, I don't care if you're 20 years, 20 years old or 60 years old, you know, it will catch up with you one day. So we made it on to Amarillo, got fuel, and got back on the road. Shortly after we got on the road, we saw this accident, and that was pretty rough. I hope nobody was hurt too bad. But that is about the only backup that we saw the whole way across up until that point, which really surprised me for a holiday weekend. Here's where we stayed last night. If you ever need parking, this is a pretty good place. They usually always have parking, but it is a dirt parking lot, so if you come in here when it's raining, it's probably going to be a muddy mess. But it is nice and quiet, and they have security um, that rides around the parking lot all night long. That's what my buddy said when we pulled in here last night. They had a car pulled over right here next to the convenience store. And uh, he said, Hell, I thought you said this was a good, quiet place to park. He said, and the gun police everywhere. He said, what are you getting me into? But, uh, nah, I've never had any issues out here. Um, it's a twin hour. Twin Arrows Casino and Resort. It's exit 219 off 40. When you get off, you'll see the little convenience store and you come over and go behind the convenience store and there's a big dirt parking lot out here. And like I say, security and all. And he told me this morning when I got up, I was trying to get woke up, walking around the truck. And he pulled over and asked everything all right. And I said, yeah, just trying to, just I just did wake up. He said, well, you know, he asked where I was going. Uh, all that stuff just make small talk and he says now if you ever get here and there's no parking <clears throat> he said there's usually always parking but if you ever get here and there's not he said turn right here in front of the store and go down he said you go to the casino he said they got a big truck parking lot down there so that was something good to know i've never been down there i'm gonna check it out when they open back up they've been closed to covid you know close for covid every time i've been in here so far gonna walk around the trailer and make sure everything's looking good and I thought I would show a little bit more of this parking lot like I say it's usually pretty much wide open most of the time I come in here it's about I don't know 20 trucks maybe total I'm just looking I'm looking at the lights make sure they they still in they just I'm thinking they just forgot to put those in at the factory I don't know and then this stuff right here I don't know, I guess it's caulking or something, but I thought they were scratches when I first got there because I saw them all up on the top, but they rub right off, so. As soon as he gets out of the store, I'll be headed on mud flaps. I'm, I'm really happy with it. I just hope the spare tire, you know, thing works out. That'll be great. I like how it's all tucked up in there. The more, I, more longer it's on there, the more it goes on it. So I'm sitting here in Kingman. I made it from, from uh, just about two hours down the road. And this is the last really good spot I know of to stop. And this is where I'm gonna get fuel at before I go into California. So I figured I would stop here, get my laundry done. It's 101 degrees and I just got done walking. Uh, I got 1.9 miles and that's all I wanted. I wanted to try to push it and get that extra 10th of a mile, but anyway, it's hot. That's why my shades are up and uh, all that to keep the sun out. And, um, what I got to tinkering with is on the back of my console, my center console, there's a cigarette outlet right here. All right. Now, what I was wanting, that's where I plug my refrigerator in. What I want is for it to stay hot all the time, but I still am searching and haven't figured that out. But I did figure out to change these, these outlets from hot with ignition or hot all the time, there's one fuse that you have to move. And right now, they're hot all the time. The ignition is off. There, well, there it is. Ignition is off, there it is. So I've got my hand on the fuse. You pull it, and you saw the power go out, and you move it one spot. Now when you move it to that one spot, whenever I turn the ignition on now. Now it's, it comes off and on with the ignition. Now I do like it being hot all the time. I need one in the truck at least that is hot all the time. So I'm going to move it back to there. And I'm going to show you guys which one it is. 
Where that comes in handy is if you have a dash camera, mine's hardwired in, so it doesn't matter if you got a radar detector, anything that needs to cut off when you cut the truck off, that's where this will come in handy. Especially if your truck's like mine and it came with that being in the hot all the time position. So this fuse right here, you can kind of see that little blade right there. If you take this out and move it over and leave that blade exposed, it's hot all the time. If you pull it back out and move it one, this way one click, then it is hot with the ignition. Like I said, I'm gonna show you. That's what I'm talking about. I want mine hot all the time. So there it is. I'm still trying to figure out how to make the one on the back of the console hot all the time. So if anybody's got inf any information on that, I would be appreciative. New day. I'm headed on into Fresno. It's Tuesday. Um, probably should have got up a little bit earlier than I did to get headed that way, but yeah, I'm still going to come off today. Uh, yesterday, got all my laundry done. Uh, walked almost two miles around the parking lot. Uh, went back out later on after it cooled off a little bit, walked some more. Got some tinkering done with the truck. I was pretty happy with what I got done yesterday. But by the time I got all my laundry put away and all that stuff, I didn't set an alarm and I kind of didn't really, wouldn't really call it overslept. I just slept a little bit. I kind of wish now I'd left a little, a little bit earlier, but traffic has been good. Uh, nothing really to talk about. It's just, I love the landscape and the scenery out here, but it's the same thing on and on and on and on. See the, I don't know what you call it. I call it a windmill farm coming up. If I took video of everything that just kind of took my breath away out here then uh, I, it would be a very long video and I gotta say it's definitely for me being from Tennessee it's definitely just kind of mind blowing the first few times you come out here because of the landscape and the lack of trees <laughs> and all that but I would really hate to break down anywhere out here there's nothing around and except windmills in the past few minutes I've seen a ton of windmills that's last time somebody back there that wind would die down if it turned all these daggum fans off out here but um yeah I'm anxious to get up here to Fresno get delivered and get headed back toward the house that way I can finish up a couple of projects and maybe get back out well, I always say I'm gonna go home and finish up a project and that way I can come back out and stay out for a while. But I always go home and finish a project and start a new project. And then that still leaves me where I have to go back home and finish that project, you know. Which I like to be home anyway. I really do. I'm not used to being out like this when I've been staying out lately. So it's uh definitely different for me. I'm here at R V Country and Fresno and just waiting on get time to come out and check me in i went ahead and got all my stuff put it over here on my tailgate waiting to get my battery and i don't put anything up until i put everything up or else i forget something leave it sitting there and put it all up one time all right so Got my paperwork, everything was good, and pulled right outside the gate, pulled into a parking spot, scanned everything sent in the company, so everything's all good. Now, I'm headed home. I'm kind of excited. It's going to be a long ride, but I'm always excited to head home. So, I hope that you guys had a great 4th of July. I hope you're having a great day today, and I will see you again in the next video. Thanks for watching.